Hey friends, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda and today we're making cheese. But before we begin, this is video is in part of a collaboration with a lot of other YouTubers and homesteaders for the month of June because June is dairy month. And so down below, there is a list of all of the folks participating for the month of June. And this is sponsored by the Inquisitive Farm Wife and the Mennonite Farm House. And at the end of the month, specifically on July 5th, on the Inquisitive Farm Wife's channel, she is going to be doing a giveaway. And in order to be entered to that giveaway, you're gonna wanna like and comment on all of these collaborators' videos including this one. The more videos watched and the more heartfelt comments that are made, the more chances for that great prize. The drawing, like I said, will be on July 5th. It's gonna be 5 p.m. Central Time, July 5th, 2023, on the Inquisitive Farm Wife's channel. The cheese we are making today is called Robiola, and it is on page 106 of our cheese book, our home cheese making book by Ricky Carroll. If you're familiar at all with my channel here, you know that every now and then we're making cheese, and this is the book I go through. So I'll link the playlist for cheese making above, but Robiola is a simple and beautiful cheese, and it hails originally from the outside of Torino, Italy, and it's incredibly versatile. It requires very little active time, which is fantastic, <laughs> and it can be eaten fresh or aged. We can make this cheese with almost any type of milk, raw, pasteurized, goat, or cow. I'm going to be using raw cow's milk today. And what's also great is it only uses one gallon. You just wanna make sure you're using a full fat milk and not low fat or skim. I've got my pot here on the stove. I've got my milk ready. The first step isn't gonna take long at all. In fact, my milk has been sitting out for almost two and a half hours. And the first step is to bring it to 72 degrees, which like I said, won't take long. When you're working with raw milk, I always pour half out and then shake it up to make sure that I'm getting all of that good cream that could be stuck to the side of the jug. I'm gonna turn my stove on to medium. The milk is currently at 56 degrees. So we're just gonna stir and bring it up to 72. We are at 72 degrees, that took about five minutes. In this small bowl here, I have a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water with a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride. I am gonna pour that in, mix it and stir it around. And then I am going to add one packet of C21 buttermilk culture. This is culture that I purchased directly from the New England Cheese Making Company. Uh, Cheesemaking.com is their website. These are freeze dried cultures. So what you wanna do is pour that on, let it sit for a couple of minutes to rehydrate before you start stirring again. Okay, let's stir that culture in. You wanna make sure you are stirring back and forth as well as top to bottom. I use a slotted cheese spoon for this, but you really could use any slotted spoon you like. We're gonna cover that and let it sit for four hours. So this is a longer time than normal. Normally the recipes will say 30 minutes, 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes. This is the longest I have seen to let it sit, but that's what makes this recipe so great is that it has such little hands-on time. In four hours, we'll come back and we'll add our rennet. Our four hours is up. 
I have four drops of rennet diluted in a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water. We are going to stir that in. You'll see that the cream has risen to the top. You can actually now see the swirling of the cream and the milk. So again, if you're using raw milk, that's just normal that the cream rises to the top. Again, back and forth, as well as up and down. We're gonna cover it and let it sit undisturbed. Now, the directions say that this can take anywhere between 20 minutes and eight hours. That's quite the variance. But what we're gonna be looking for is whey to sit on top of the curd. Now the rennet kind of coagulates the milk and it creates the curd and then the whey separates and kind of sits on the top. So I'll keep checking it every hour or so. We'll come back and I'll let you know what we're looking for once we have it. But basically cover and leave undisturbed. It's been almost five and a half hours and the cheese is ready. Now I'm going to be fully transparent here. I didn't really check it every hour. Like I said, I was going to, <laughs> I was out, I was running errands. I was just doing life. Um, but I came back home, uh, showered and looked again and everything is great. So I would say, I know I checked at the two hour mark maybe or one and a half hour mark and it was not ready. So somewhere between the two and the five hour mark, it was good. Let's go to the next step. So I want you to be able to see the difference here and you I'm hoping the camera can pick it up. But along the edge, you almost see that the, the milk, it's really a curd now, it's one big curd, has kind of pulled away from the pan and there is a thin layer of clear whey on top. And I'm gonna tilt it so you can see. Can you see the clear whey? It's kind of resting on top. That's how you know you're ready for the next step. And the next step is to cut our curds. And I just use an offset spatula. You can use a knife. We're gonna be cutting it into one and a half inch columns. I gotta kind of be fast because the whole thing's moving now. So first, I go one direction. And now we're gonna go the other side. Don't worry. If your measurements are not exact, that's okay. We're gonna let it rest for five minutes and let the curds firm up a bit. We are now gonna just stir our curds around for about 10 minutes, very gently. It's okay if you end up breaking some during the stirring process. We're just trying to help release more of that whey. So we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and we're just gonna stir every couple of minutes over that 10 minute period. So while we're going through this 10 minute period of occasionally stirring, I really think it's important to note that again, this cheese recipe is just a little bit different because we heated it up to 72 in the very beginning. We haven't touched the burner since. The temperature is still ambient room temperature. I haven't measured it, but I would estimate it's between like 68 and 72. It's kind of held that room temperature. And we have not turned the burner back on which in a lot of the hard cheeses, you're doing that. You're heating those curds back up to release more whey, to make a drier curd, a much firmer and drier cheese. We're not doing that with the roviola. So once we are 10 minutes is up and we've done with our stirring, we're gonna let it sit for five more minutes and that's gonna let more of the curds just sink to the bottom and more of the whey rise to the top. We will then take a ladle and I've got three basket molds here. It's 
basically says take three basket molds and we're going to line them with the cheesecloth of the butter muslin and scoop our curds in. So I'll show you my setup, but you can put your basket molds in your sink. You can put them in a bus tub, kind of like a big tote. That's what I have on a draining rack and let them drain that way. But we're gonna get the curds in the butter muslin, in the basket mold, and then we're gonna flip uh, a couple of times and let them sit overnight. Okay, I've moved this over to the counter just so we can get ready for the next step. But uh, the 10 minutes is up. I'm just giving it one last stir and we're gonna let it sit for five more minutes and we should see a lot of these curds sink to the bottom and more of the whey come to the top. Okay, so can you see how more whey has come to the top? I'm just gonna take this to the sink and pour off some of this whey. You wanna pour off only until you get to the curd line. So I won't be pouring too much off. And there we go. I didn't pour very much off at all because I didn't wanna lose my curds. Okay. So here I have my bus tub with my three basket molds. I'm just gonna start with one at a time here. Get these out of the way. I'm just gonna start ladling the curds in. Okay, we're gonna be folding this over. I'm just gonna move it aside and let some more of that whey drain out. Go to my next basket mold. two are definitely larger molds so this one's going to create a smaller cheese plus I just don't have that many curds left here okay we're now going to fold over okay, this one's really tiny I'm just going to leave this like its own little ball going to flip it so it drains the other way. And we're going to do the same here. It'll be a little bit easier to see with these. We're just trying to get all of that extra way out and you can kind of already see how much has accumulated down here so again do it in some type of bus tub like this or just even in your sink is what you're going to want to do but i'm picking it up by the butter muslin and just flipping it in the mold we're going to let this sit for 10 minutes and then we're gonna flip again. Okay, so you can already see that a lot of the whey has come out. We are going to take these out, flip them in the butter muslin, and then rewrap and put back in the mold. This is a typical action that happens when you are forming your cheese. You just have to be careful because this is still very loose and soft. But basically I flipped it in the butter muslin and then I'm putting it back in my mold here. So what this was on the bottom is now the top. And don't worry about your cheese having like a big indentation in it, right? It's still forming. So again, I just kind of 
flipped it, putting it back in. This one, this little guy, <laughs> this little guy is going to get eaten first. Okay. We're going to let these sit for one hour and then we'll come back and do the exact same thing. Okay. It's been one hour. I actually also drained the whey that was in the bottom of my tub here because it was a lot and I didn't want it to actually having my cheese sit in the way. So now we're actually going to take it out of the butter muslin and put it back in the mold, flip it, and just leave it in the mold like that. It's going to sit out at room temperature for about 12 to 18 hours. So overnight. And then after that period, we should come back and we should see this firm up a little bit. It's still pretty soft. Okay, so we'll leave these overnight and we'll come back tomorrow. I am going to put a clean towel, just kind of drape it over the edges here. That way it's not touching the cheese, but still covering the cheese. And we'll check in the morning. It's been 14 hours since we last worked with our cheese last night. And bear with me, I've got the dehydrator going, the dishwasher going, and the freeze dryer going. <laughs> So there might be a little ambient background noise. Um, our cheeses look great. I'll show them to you in a minute. What we're going to do is take them out of the mold and put them in a saturated brine for one hour. Saturated brine is something that you make um, and you keep it in your fridge. So I make it once a year, usually at the beginning of every year. And then I keep it for that year for all of my cheese making needs. And then at the end of the year, I dump it and make a new one come the next January. Sometimes I gotta stir it up. But basically, I only make a half gallon at a time. The recipe in the book, which is on page 46, I believe is for a full gallon. I just haven't found that I needed to have a full gallon yet. So keep that in mind with your own cheese making journey. Uh, but it's basically non chlorinated water, cheese salt, or Redmond Real Salt is what I use calcium chloride and a vinegar. Now it's mostly salt and water. The calcium chloride is one tablespoon and the white vinegar is one teaspoon. And again, that's to one gallon of non-chlorinated water. So it's mostly water and salt. And we soak our cheeses in this. Again, a process we do a lot with hard cheeses and it just helps extract as much more out as possible and dry out those curbs, right? Salt is very drying. So we have a, just a dish here. You can use whatever dish you want to do your um, saturated brine in as long as your cheese fits in it. And you can see how much they've kind of condensed down, right? How skinny they are. So, which is what you're looking for. That means the whey has come out. And I've already drained my tub again this morning once. There's a little whey here on the bottom. But also the basket mold makes a really pretty design on your cheese. And this one, <laughs> well, that one's that one. Okay, so we're gonna pour our saturated brine. I'm going to do all of these cheeses, basically these two cheeses, at the same time in here. And because the water is so saturated with the salt, a lot of the times your cheese just floats. And this is going to be in here at room temperature. I'm just going to put both in. 30 minutes in though, I'm going to flip these to make sure 
that both sides are getting covered well. So in 30 minutes, I'm gonna rotate the cheeses. Not only flip them so the other side is exposed, but I'm also gonna flip whichever one's on top is then gonna to go to the bottom. And then we'll go for 30 more minutes after that. So one hour total. The one hour is up. Like I had said, I did flip 30 minutes through. So now all I have is just two plates um, with a long drying rack. This is actually the same one that I used earlier. I just washed it. If you have two smaller ones, that works too. I'm just using what I have right now. So I'm gonna take my cheese out and place it on the rack and I'm putting it over a plate because inevitably more whey is going to drain off and you wanna be able to catch that. You want to be able to protect these somehow. They're just gonna sit at room temperature um, until they're really dried out. We're gonna flip them every couple of hours, just check on them. Obviously you can see they're pretty wet right now and you don't ever wanna put that in your cheese cave or age it when it's really wet. So we're just gonna keep these at room temperature. And I put these on, these are just like picnic savers. They're collapsible, they're cheap, they're easy. And I do it just in case there are any um, flying insects around it just helps protect them it's not foolproof but it helps so i am going to leave this on the counter for anywhere from six to eight hours i'm really just going to kind of keep checking and flipping every couple of hours to make sure they are drying once they're fully dry we're going to put them in our cheese cave good morning it is the next morning so when I last left you, we had our cheese draining on the rack, the metal rack over a plate, and then I had those picnic savers over them. I did flip them every couple of, I don't know, like before I went to bed, and then the next, you know, obviously this morning, I think I flipped again, and there is still some way coming off. So our cheese is here. Everything looks good. It's pretty dry. There's still a little moisture, but overall it looks good. I have this container that I purchased um, and I use this sometimes to kind of help age my cheese when they have to go into the refrigerator. So all I'm going to do is put this in and it's okay that they're going to touch each other. I'll just put that there and cover. And what this does is it helps create a good humid environment, right? It's not too dry. A refrigerator can be pretty dry. So the directions tell us that we wanna age it for about four days at a 52 to 58 degrees Fahrenheit um, with about 80 to 85% humidity. So obviously my refrigerator is not between 50 and 52. It's okay. Again, don't stress, but by keeping it in this what I call like an aging box. It helps keep the humidity in and just helps the aging happen. So I'm gonna go stick this in the fridge. I may turn it once a day, but it's gonna be in the refrigerator for four days and then we'll come back. Welcome back. It has been four days since we last came together and our cheese is what we would call a young aged cheese and we can start to enjoy it as such. Now, I will not be enjoying all of this cheese within the next few days. So whatever we don't use today as a family, I'm going to keep and put back into my aging box and just keep it in the refrigerator. And I will turn it maybe once a week. I usually try to flip my cheeses about once a week anyway. So I'll do the same for this. And really this can continue to age for up to 40 days. If you start to st see like little pieces of mold um, growing, all you can do is actually wipe it with your saturated brine or just kind of flick it off and get it off. Um, but really this cheese is going to be amazing and we're going to get try it right now. So I have some homemade sourdough. I've got some homemade hot pepper jelly. That was in our refrigerator. I've got some 18 month old prosciutto. We're just gonna start with this little one here. 
and I'm gonna kind of cut it here on an angle. This is gonna be a really good snack today. Before I do my little crostini, I wanna try just the cheese first. Mmm. Oh my word, it's creamy. Not like a cream cheese creamy, but creamy. It is salty. I think the saturated brine helps infuse some of that salt flavor, but not too salty. It's got a great flavor. I wish I could describe what it is, but I can't. It's really delicious. Let's go ahead and make some crostini. This is the best part about making cheese and making these videos. <laughs> it's getting to try it. Perfection. Absolute perfection. The little heat of the hot pepper jelly along with this sour and texture of the bread and then the creaminess of the cheese paired with a little bit of the saltiness of the cheese and the saltiness of the prosciutto. Perfection. Next time you need to show up to someone's house with an appetizer, or even if you're having people over to your own house, try to make this cheese because then you can put this whole thing together and tell everyone that the cheese is homemade and you were going to wow your guests. They're gonna be so surprised and so amazed. It only took one gallon, and it really only took about four to five days to get to this point. It's so versatile and so delicious. Don't forget to comment, like, and comment down below, as well as all of the other collaborators along within the June is Dairy Month, and the list of them and their channel is below in the show notes as well. So you can not miss one of the June is Dairy Month videos. But again, to be entered into that drawing, you wanna comment, like, and go watch all of the other videos as well. The drawing is going to be held on July 5th at 5 p.m. Central Time on the Inquisitive Farm Wife's channel. Thank you for joining me today on our cheese making journey. I hope you will consider making your own Robiola cheese. And thank you to the Inquisitive Farm Wife and the Mennonite Farmhouse and all of the other homesteaders and YouTubers in this collaboration for the June is Dairy Month. Don't forget to check them out and don't forget to hit subscribe to the Happy Homestead. I will see you next time. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.